All right, so today is all about a little bit of housekeeping and cleanup. So as you can see here, for the most part, our rig is pretty much working quite well in terms of like rotations and all that sort of stuff. It's actually rotating and uh, location wise, it's really, really good. Um, we didn't have to worry about adding any other constraints or putting things into nested groups. But when it comes to scale, there is some issues there. So we could go ahead and try and fix that up a little bit. Um, but otherwise, we're, we're looking pretty good so far. Now, really, the only thing to get this to scale a little bit better, I think, apart from the torso, which may need a little bit of work, is firstly, we can just go ahead and uh, constrain the global control to our rig group. So this will actually control the scale of the overall group here. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can actually call this um, deform rig now because this is exactly where all of our deform joints are. So we're going to go ahead and grab our global control, grab our deform rig, go to constrain and scale. And now if we add that now, have a go, the whole rig is scaling pretty well. There are some issues though. And the main issues is all about that spline control. The spline IK in the spine is causing a lot of strife. And that's about it really in terms of what's causing most of our issues. So we'll have to go ahead and fix that in the future. But for now, we'll leave that and we'll figure out other things first. So firstly, we need to lock off and hide certain things. So um, in the FK controls, all of our FK controls, we need to lock and hide scale and transforms. So lock and hide the following. So lock and hide the scale uh, as well. Actually, yes, lock and hide the scale in this case. So we're gonna lock and hide anything with FK. Anything with FK, only the transforms for the, um, only the rotations should really be visible at this point. All right, going up the chain. All right, for anything that's uh, IK though, we'll have to lock and hide the scale at the very least. But first, let's just go through all the FK controls within, oh shit, um, within the um, system here. With the um, FKIK controls, we can lock and hide everything except for the FKIK switch. Oops, sorry, wrong one again, undo. All right, cool. So that just means that if we try to, you know, translate this, we can't, which is, you know, pretty much exactly what we need. So we just want to be able to translate using the um, the hip control, really. That will give us exactly what we need. So in this case, we're just going to lock and hide the scale. All right, cool. With the neck, jaw, and um, neck and the head, it's again everything. With the eyes, not really much of an issue. Not really, won't really do much difference, but um, we can just leave it as is. Um, with these guys, we can probably get away with. Uh, we're gonna freeze those transforms for one. Um, we can probably get away with 
uh, just translation. We don't have to worry about rotation all that much, but just to be sure, let's just go ahead and just lock and hide the scale at the very least. All right, cool. So that's cleaned up a little bit. Uh, with the hand controls, we're just gonna go ahead and lock and hide the scale only. All right, lovely. Uh, for the same down here as well. So over here with our controls, we can go ahead and lock and hide scale on the feet. Oh, fuck off. Let's just make sure that that's frozen out. Shouldn't affect anything. Doesn't look like it has, that's good. Good. Um, we're going to go ahead and lock and hide the scale. And for all the rotational controls here, we're going to just lock and hide everything except for rotation. Yeah, that's all good. All right, I think that's all good there. Lovely, fantastic. Uh, with the global control, obviously we want to have everything visible. With these pole controls, again, lock and hide selected. All right, cool. And then we need to do the FK controls for the arms and legs. So just go ahead and turn on the FK for all of your controls. So the switch can be set to zero. That will bring back the visibility on our FK controls. Great, save that for now. And just go through the process of locking and hiding. Now, I'm not sure if this works, but maybe if we select all three at the same time, we can do all three at the same time. Let's see. Yeah. Ah, oh, good, it did work, fantastic. That just makes me next there, the whole finger thing a lot faster to do. So let's just go ahead and do that. Grab all the fingers, translate, lock and hide selected, scale, lock and hide selected. Great. Same thing with the thumbs. Great, so now we can safely rotate without completely screwing up our rig. All right, fantastic. All right, that's everything locked and hidden that we need to lock and hide. So now we just need to set up a few things so uh, this whole setup looks a little bit cleaner. So right now we have a few controllers that are not quite in the right spot, not quite in the area that they need to be. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start to work out where to place things. So these switches, for instance, they can go inside the um, global control under the, hmm, in the case of this one, because they all have um, constraints, they can just be put in a global control, fuck it. That'll work. So when we select it, it will select everything there. The FK and IK group control or uh, organization controls or the mechanism controls, these are basically uh, have become, well, at least with the IK control group, um, just uh, mechanism groups. So we can actually call this MCH group in this case. And then we got the control group over here. So what we're gonna do is select everything there. And again, just chuck it in the global. All right, and inside that, we're just gonna grab those and lock and hide all of it. So now if we select everything, you can see it's all being selected, which is, you know, perfect. 
And things are looking pretty good in terms of scale now as well, except for that bloody midrift. So we'll fix that up in the, in the future. But so far, so good. All right. Um, for all of this stuff, uh, our MCH groups. So I can group those together. And I'm going to call that um, MCH spline IK group. And I'm going to chuck in the um, IK handle and the spine as well into there. And I'm going to chuck that into the global group, global control. There we go. So now, oh, you can see how it's really playing, not playing nice now. Uh, we might actually, instead of that not be, instead of that being in there, we'll probably call that a do not touch group. And then we're going to lock and hide that away. And we can keep the dis visibility there, but we can just turn that off as well. So we don't have to see it anymore. Lovely. So for the fingers, these finger groups, um, we can probably put them somewhere uh, useful. So in our case, it will probably just have to be under the COG. So that will help just keep things in place. So now everything is working well. Fantastic. So now all our controls are in one group. We have our FK controls in another group here on the, underneath the global control. You just have this MC, uh, IK MCH group there as well. That's fine. Um, as long as we don't touch it, it should be okay. So that's fine. Uh, we could also put it into the do not touch group if you wanted to, actually. And if we start to scale that, it should still work. And it does. Great. And if we turn on the IK, turn on the IK, just to double check this is working. And it is. Fantastic. And again, we're still getting this issue with the scale and the spine. So we just have to figure out how to fix that. And other than that, we're good to go. Okay, so to fix that little scale issue now, we have one little thing to do in the node editor. So let's open up that two panels. And we're gonna <laughs> look at how messy this thing has gotten. Uh, because we pinned everything, it should be fine to just go ahead and clean out the graph and see exactly what we've got to begin with. So we do, which is pretty much what we want, um, which is great. So we have everything we have need to get this working. So basically what we need to do is input uh, this global control. So we're going to add that to our list. Uh, yep, there you are there. And then we're going to feed in the scale with an extra node in between our curve info node and our spine stretch divide node. So we're basically going to have to cancel out the scale a little bit. So uh, a new multiply divide node for this. Sorry about that. Multiply, I divide, and then we're going to chuck in a divide operator, call it uh, global scale, normalize div. Basically, this is just a thing saying that we're going to normalize the scale by dividing using the global scale. So arc length now of here. So we're going to input the spine, spline info there. And then in input 2x, we're going to put in the scale of our uh, global control on y, because it's the y scale that's affecting the spline into 2x. And then we're going to replace the input of our stretch spline, spline stretch divide node with this new output. So output x, we're just going to input one X over here instead. And that should fix the spline, the scale issue. And it is fantastic. That's it. All right. So here's the end result of all that hard work. Now, if you're wondering how I got the colors, it's pretty simple. Just go to uh, your shape that you want to change colors for. 
pop over to your attribute editor, go to display, drawing overrides, and then enable overrides and then change the color to whatever the hell you want. And just do that across the entire rig. So as you can see here, I've got uh, anything in the center, I like to keep yellow. Anything I like to have on the left side, I'll have it one color, in this case, green. On the other color, I have it as red. And then I have all my midsection IK, IK and FK as yellow and blue. So the FK is blue and the midsection IK is yellow. And that's pretty much how I roll for all of this stuff. And if I was to be really, really specific about it, I'd probably make them my left and right shoulders green and red as well. And that's pretty much it. That's the process on how to change the colors. So I'm not going to go through that whole process because it's just too boring to check <laughs> to show you guys. So apart from that, uh, you should have, at the end of this, a fully functional rig that can scale, that can rotate, and be placed anywhere without any offsets. All your controls should be zeroed out with no transforms and uh, be functional. So they should all have their function ready to roll. Everything should be working. As you can see here, everything's doing their thing. Um, let's turn on the switch, for instance. Boom. And as you can see, that's working great. At this stage, I'd also say it'd be wise to uh, disable the visibility of your locators in your FK groups. So the way to do that, you don't do it through the object properties because that will just hide everything in your hierarchy. You want to do it through the actual shape node. So just go through and just delete, not delete, uh, hide the visibility of all those locators that are in your outliner. So that way you can actually not accidentally click them. So as you can see here, the locator, the offset um, locators are there. Um, you don't want to accidentally move those. So go ahead and just disable the visibility of those locators one by one, because that way you won't accidentally click them. So that's my recommendation as well. Um, so yeah, that's basically how the, like a basic rig should functionally work. I mean, there's always things you can add more to, like, uh, we're going to add some twist controls in the forearms and the biceps and stuff in the next few videos. Uh, we can add all kinds of isolation rotations for the head. You can add face controls. We're going to do that in the future with some basic blend shapes, but overall, the, if you want to start animating right now, you can start animating right now. Um, if you want to go ahead and refine the weight paints, go ahead and refine the weight paints. Um, but overall, the functionality of the rig is there. You can actually use it if you want to do some test animations, whatever you want. Um, if, this, if this is as far as you need to go, then that's as far as you need to go. If you want to go to the next few stages, like weight painting, uh, facial controls, um, twist controls in the forearms, then we have a few more videos to cover. But apart from that, we're, we're pretty much done. Um, so yeah, in the next few videos, it's gonna be all about fixing up stuff like wrist twists, uh, adding blend shapes to faces like smiles and frowns and blinks, and of course, weight painting, which is always going to be a pain in the ass. But apart from that, that's all that's left. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.